Hi, I am your self-proclaimed king of the nerds. Actually, no, today I'm just coming at you as Greg. <laughs> the other day I was actually asked about becoming a DM for the first time. And since I've been into RBG since I was about 8 years old, and I've been DMing since I was about 15, maybe 16, I figured I'd drop some of my advice and some knowledge on a series of videos here. So, sit back, chill out, and um, let's get this shit started. Ah. <clears throat> Alright. So you want to be a DM. But you've never DM'd before. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to start. You don't know where to get your ideas from. Well, let's see if we can help with that. First off, the question is, how well do you know the system you want to run? How well do you know the world? How well do you know the rules of the game? Then you got to ask yourself how many hours you have been a player because you need to learn to follow before you can lead and that's pretty much what DMing is. It is leading people down a path that you have written and you are showing them. Alright, well first figure out what system you're running. You probably already know this. Like, I want a DM, which is usually referred to for Dungeons and Dragons, or I want a GM, or I want to be the Castle Keeper, or <clears throat> the Dungeon Guide, or Whatever game happens to be the person who wants to run this current adventure or module or world that you're in. Where do you get your ideas? Look around. Video games, movies, comic books, dreams, the friends who hang out with you. Everywhere around you is an adventure. Everywhere around you is another part of a story. Don't be afraid to bring things in. Don't be afraid to just write down whatever pops into your head. Doesn't mean that's what you're going to run. That's just an idea that's popped into your head. And that's actually a good way to start. Make sure you have notebook. <laughs> I really didn't realize that was on there. See? Mm -hmm. And something to write with. On my table, I got pens, I got pencils, I got markers. I got a whole bunch of different things to write with. But keep a notebook with you. Keep a smaller notebook in your back pocket. Anytime you have an idea, write it down. All right. Make sure it's notes that you know, but just write it down. That's a good way to start. Any idea that pops into your head doesn't mean, need to be a cohesive story. It doesn't need to be a plot device. It doesn't need to be this huge epic adventure. Whatever pops into your head. And later on, when you go to sit down and write for the first time, go over your notes. Huh. Can these be connected? Can I figure out how to work this into my story? Well, that's up to you. See, you are the dungeon master. It is your dream, your story, your adventure. Yeah, the campaign you're running or the game you're running might have the world that you are doing, but it's your adventure. You're the one who's writing it. You're the one who's leading these people down. Now, just because it's yours doesn't mean it has to be this grand, epic adventure. Everything starts small. It could be simple as helping a cat out of a tree. Or breaking into some guy's house who stole some type of artifact. It doesn't have to be this huge, world-altering adventure. Now, that's one mistake that many DMs make. They expect that the campaign they write is to be this huge, world-changing event. It doesn't have to be. It starts small. All right, and keep magic items out of it till at least, let's say, fifth level, between third and fifth level. Keep magic items, and even then, make them small, make them common, make them something that's not groundbreaking. Okay, like a plus one weapon shouldn't even really be considered till about level five. But bag of holding, eh? That's up and down. Now, you'll excuse me, I'll be talking a lot, and even though I'm talking about RPGs in general, a lot of the references I'll be throwing out there will be Dungeons & Dragons. I hope nobody's really lost because of how popular that game has become over the years. I started D&D... Oh, man. You know, I started D&D before I even knew it was D&D, okay, if that makes any sense. There were times when me and my cousins would be sitting at a sit-down restaurant with our family waiting for our food to come, and... You know, sometimes it takes forever, so one of one of us would ask for a pen, flip over our paper placemats, 
and just draw a crude map and be like, all right, you're an elf, you're a dwarf, what do you want to be? There's always that one person in the group who's like, I want to be the Terminator. Well, okay, there's really no rules. And then you just tell a story, what do you want to do? But that's more of a storytelling than a role-playing adventure, but that, that's besides the point. We call it, we're like, we're playing D&D, &D, but it's just pretty much not much. So, storytelling, RPGs, go from there. So, D&D has been a big influence with the stuff that I've done. So, excuse me if I do D&D references over pretty much anything else. So, anyways, where to begin? Writing down all your ideas is a good way to start. Just keep them in a small notebook. Keep them in a big notebook. Even though this is a story and you might see a lot of writing on here, a lot of this writing is just, see, I have a couple pages with only one or two things written on it. Then I have like, whatever pops into my head is what I write down. And then have a separate notebook for your actual story. And then see what you can do from there. Put them together. The first step is just write down whatever comes into your head. Like, oh, that's stupid, or that's too dark, or that's not funny, or I don't think they'll be interested in that. Just write it down anyways. All right, write it down in the book. Go from there. Two, when you're actually sitting down, hold the Dungeon Master book in your hand. Make sure you know it. You don't have to memorize it. You don't have to read it word for word, but at least know the information that's in there. Then, throw it out the window. Not literally, okay? Hold on before you go running to the nearest window to huck it like a frisbee. Think of the Dungeon Master Guide. More of that. It's a guide. It's guidelines. It's not a set rule in stone. That is what you need to know on how the world runs. You don't necessarily need to be like, hey, this is exactly how it's done. It's guidelines, right? I've been doing homebrew for D&D &D since halfway through my 3.5 run as a dungeon master because if you keep running stuff exactly how the book is everything's predictable everybody knows what's going on and you're really not exercising your imaginary wings all right don't be literal with the book think of it as guidelines okay <clears throat> You sat down. You have all your things that have popped in your head. You have it all written down. Where to go from here? I work backwards. I know what I want the final outcome for their adventure to be. Okay. Big bad for this campaign. How did they get there? Where were they before they got there? And I keep going back until I figure this is a good starting point. They come into town. They meet an old man by a well who's having trouble getting water out of the well. When they finally get the bucket up, the bucket is full of gold. <gasps> what? That gold everybody wants. But the mayor, hearing about this, wants the golden well for himself. Uses his guards to barricade the well on security for the town. You, being adventurers, offer your existence to go and explore said well. You go into the well, and you do find water, gold, under the water. Where is this gold coming from? You follow the stream. And who knows? You go further into the sewers to find a troll horde somehow got in there? Or maybe some dwarven community is living in the sewers because they were pushed out of their dwarven home in the mountains. You can do whatever. It doesn't matter how silly or how stupid it sounds. Alright? Your world. Alright? Keep it plausible. Though. Okay? Don't be like, it's, it's a large purple buffalo that poops out gold coins. Yeah, that's it. No. No, I mean, you could have that if you know, if that's a creature that's in your world. But I have a feeling that a lot of those things would be hunted down and kept as pets. And then money really wouldn't be a problem. But, 
See, I did that entire opening off the top of my head. Doesn't mean I'm good. Doesn't mean I'm amazing. It's working backwards. And then when you work backwards, go from beginning to end. In your head, beginning to end, does this make sense? Am I going down the right path? What's the next step? Because sometimes if you go from backwards to forward and then forward to the end again, you'll find plot holes. You'll find things, hey, maybe if I did it this route, it'd be a little bit more fun. It would extend the campaign a little bit more. I could do more with it. So you have the story. Cool. What do you fill the story with? NPCs? Monsters? A big bad to take over the world? Stop it. No. For your first campaign, first adventure, keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. It's something that everybody needs to know. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple and stupid. There you go. Alright. If you can't figure it out, then they can't figure it out. Right. Many campaigns for new people should be starting at a level one. If you're a little bit more experienced, then yeah, go th start at third or fifth level. But for anybody that's new to the world or anyone that would like a challenge, start at level one. And that level one should be simple. Not overly simple. Not, oh, push red button, you win. No. But don't be throwing dragons and vampires and God knows what else at them. Figure out what the challenge rating is. And you should know challenge rating if you're going to be a DM. It's one of those rules that we talked about earlier. Know the rules of the book. <sighs> Anyways. The story is that matters. Alright. How they get from the beginning to the end is the fun part. You as a DM telling your story is the fun part. Alright? Mm. Don't be embarrassed about the things you throw into your world. It's your world. It is your campaign. These are your thoughts, your images. And sometimes if you run this campaign, it doesn't matter how many times you go back and forward on the test runs in your head, officially running this campaign, you'll find a way to make it better. Expand it, add to it, take things away, and then, who knows, maybe one day you'll be able to write it down and make something epic from it. Alright, I might have rambled a little bit on this, but this is the first segment, pretty much, probably going to call this Bridging to New Worlds. Because I'm here to give what I've learned over the years as a DM. Now, there's other DMs that have different philosophies, different theories, different things to teach. But, this is me. This is what I have to teach. This is what I have to tell you. Start by keeping a notebook in your back pocket with a pen. And any idea that pops in your head, just write it down. That is the best way to start. And don't be afraid and don't be embarrassed of anything that you write down because these are your ideas. Don't ever be ashamed of your ideas. Alright guys, once again, I'm your self-proclaimed king of the nerd, except today I'm just your lovable DM. I love you guys. I hope you're all having a great Sunday. Peace out.